Hey guys, very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome back on this channel and uh, we have got 900 videos. Um, some of the videos are in English, some of the videos are in Hindi. So this video will be in English because I have received an uh, email from a subscriber uh, who is not from India and uh, her name is Florin. So Florin has sent, uh, sent out me a dummy data. I'm going to talk about that. Okay, so let's go and check that. And yes, this video I will upload under the playlist called Excel VBA. Uh, event English you can see that right so any title which has an English that means the videos is in you know all the videos you find under that playlist uh, uh, they are in English and if any title has Hindi like this one Excel VBA interview series Hindi this is for Hindi viewers okay so this is under the events English because we we are going to use the Excel VBA event here this is a very very good uh, classic example where we are going to talk about three things one is the array in Excel we will write an array function then we will go and use the vba event a little bit of vba event and then the conditional formatting okay so conditional formatting i'm sure you all know that it's a pretty basic thing in excel so let's go and quickly start this so florin sent out this data to me and uh, florin said that what actually she wants to do she wants to go and put this data in this way you can see in a vertical direction in a single column so you have a 3355 and you want to put all the information in this way 3355 4466 right and after she's done with this after we are done with this then what we want is if i select any you know cell here like for example if i select uh, 66 then this 66 in this table should get highlighted like you know maybe we can go and use the conditional formatting and we can give this yellow blue or whatever the color you want okay so let's go and start this we have a long way this is going to be fantastic project for all of you who are working in excel day to day right all the time so the first thing is how you can convert this this table this table into you know vertical table so there, there might be a lot of ways of doing it you can do it in power query or maybe you know through vba but we will go and simply use the arrays here okay now to use the array what i'm going to do is i simply go and select this table you select the table like this okay and then you say control shift enter when you say control shift enter array what it does it put all these numbers in this formula how you can check that you click on the equals to sign after the equals to sign and you you know you just go and press f9 you see that this is your table now i copy this and i say escape because we have to work with this formula but i'll write it here for your understanding now this cell because we have used control shift enter this cell has given you all these table values you can see 33 55 and then remember that there is a semicolon there is not a comma because the next row starts so you have 44 66 and then again there is a colon right and then you have semicolon then you have t and y t and y and then again a semicolon right so we just said that select the table and press ctrl shift enter now why i actually want to do this this is very important right now you see the thing is that if i can use these this you know this is the entire table so if i drag this table this table will go with me this table actually will go with this formula okay we simply uh, what we will do is we will freeze this table so i simply say dollar and dollar like this okay now the thing is you must be familiar with the offset function so what we are going to going to do here is that we will use the offset function why offset well i think that using offset what we can do we can say in the reference this is my reference this is my table and in this table i will go and say that you know the row number and the column number of 33 the row number and the column number of 55 and then 44 66 you know like that and that's it then if you change the row number and the column using the offset the numbers will automatically start coming because offset what it does it basically helps you in uh, locating your you know the required value by by you have to tell that you know from your reference what is the row number of that cell what is the column number of that cell right so this is the plan basically so in offset we need to remember that these two parameters the row and the column they always starts with zero okay so what we do is that we create a separate table here you can hide this from the user later now for example if you see this is my table now in this table if you look at uh, this from the offset understanding 
how the offset actually works this is a row number zero and this is row number one and this is two this is three this is four and this is five and same way this is your column number zero and this is your column number one so we have to just go and give these values it's pretty simple like for example if 33 if you look at the 33 it stands at zero and zero which means zero row and zero column make sense right then you go for the 55 because then you have you want the 55 here right so what is where is the 55 55 on this table or you can say on this table it's on the same row it's on the same row which is 0 and the column number 1 so you will write here 0 and 1 okay now let's talk about the 44 44 is on the first row of this table and on the zero column because we are going to start we, we are going to use the reference of this table so when you use that table reference you know you have to go and give your row and the column based on your table selection right so if my table starts from here obviously 44 is going to be on the row number one and the column is zero you're getting the point right and same way for 66 66 is on the first row and first column right well i have written these values so that you you know you can easily understand this okay but you don't have to write it okay so this is how it is so if i go for t which is my text it's going to be two right and the column number will be zero and for y it's again second row and the first column this is how we are going to actually do this okay you can see that y is on my second row and on the first column so if you have a lot of values obviously you don't have to write like this if you look at the pattern what is happening here it's zero zero one one and then two two so you know you can just go and uh, <laughs> be a little smart here you can write in this way so you can say that you know plus one because ultimately the table will set and you say equals to three isn't it so when you go and drag this maybe if you have more values you just go and drag like this you will have all the values you can see that right so the moment if i uh, let me quickly paste this here paste this here you see that we are getting the list right so if i have more values obviously those values will, will be picked up same way guys you see that 0 1 then 0 1 and then 0 1 so it's pretty simple you know you just go and copy this now why we need to write this manually you know we can do this way it's pretty simple right so this is i'm telling you because you may have a long list now this is telling me now the offset that where it has to go okay so when you now come back to your this function this where you have created an array what you do you simply go and write here offset okay you write the offset put the reference this table you know the table right i have already share, shared the table now what you do is you say that my row actually is going to be this one right and the column is going to be this one that's it so what happens in this table d7 to e12 which is this table it will automatically start finding the row one and the column one which is 33 right in this way and when you drag this make sure 07 p7 you should not freeze you should not lock it so when you drag this what happens 07 p7 will be 08 p8 and so on so you will start giving them the row and the direction remember that reference has to be freezed because from the reference you're going one row down two row down three row down and same way you know the column wise okay if you have more headers here more values obviously you have to go and write that as well okay you can i mean uh, expand the table now what i'm going to do is i'm simply going to say Control shift enter now when you say Control shift enter it picked up the first value pretty cool right so now if i drag this i should be able to get all the values let's go and check that wow fantastic you see that we have been able to pick all the values so this is playing a very very important role and i told you that it's very easy to make you know once you get the idea how they are these numbers are changing you know there is a logic behind these numbers right so you can just go and build the formula and you can drag it and of course now i can hide these columns i don't have to show so our first task is done which is that we have created a table congratulations <laughs> i hope you have understood this now what is the next thing i want to do the next thing I want to do is uh, let me first of all delete this to avoid any confusion. Okay, this is our basically the answer. So I just say cut. Right, this is our answer. Now, if you have let's say more numbers, you say uh, one more value is coming here, triple six, and let's say you know triple seven. Right now, if I drag this, you have already 
put here 6, 6 and 0, 1. So you just need to go and drag the formula. It's automatically going to come. You see that? See this, right? Make sense, right? Now, here comes the important part. Now, if I select this, I want 33 to be highlighted, right? So my plan is that first I want to capture what I'm selecting. And for that, you will have to go and use a VBA event. There is, a, there is an event, self-triggered macro in VBA, which says that if you select any cell, I can run a macro for you, right? Generally, what happens? You go and click on the buttons and you run the, uh, run the macro, isn't it? But what if I don't want to run the macro by myself, you know, because this has to be automated. Just imagine that, you know, you're telling somebody that you want to select 33 and then click on the macro, the button, and then you will see the colors, you know, that person may not like that idea. It, it has to happen automatically. I select this, my macro should check immediately, where is this 33? And it should color it, isn't it? Okay, so I'm telling you the simplest way, how we can do it. Let's go back to the developer tab, Visual Basic. Okay, so in the Visual Basic, first of all, what we have to do, this is my project sheet. So I go in the project sheet over here. And now let me uh, in increase the font. So you can see that clearly. Now here there is an event which, uh, which is called selection event. So what you have to do, you have to go and select the sheet from here, worksheet. And now this is going to come automatically. If let's say, for example, it is not showing you, you can always click on this and you can choose this selection change. What is a selection change? Selection change means that anytime you select the cell, this macro will fire. I'll show you, see this, I put the break code here. If I select this 44, look at this man, this is going to fire, right? One thing, important thing, you can't go and use F8 because these are the events. Event happens, event runs, VB event runs, self-triggered macros, you know, we call them. They run when the condition satisfies and condition depends what, what kind of a basically event you are choosing. So if I change my selection, this is going to immediately fire. Now in this, what we are supposed to do is we are going to actually search our this, you know, change event only in this range, in this range. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that if my user selects any cell between D7 to D E13, you know, E13, only then the selection change event should fire. Now that's pretty interesting, isn't it? It's very easy to do it. So what we're going to do is we simply go and use here a function called uh, uh, this uh, application dot intersect. Okay. So we say that, let me just go and build it from the scratch. So if I say that if application dot intersect this one, okay, I write start the bracket. Intersect means that whatever you're going to choose, if that comes in this range and the range is, you have to provide the range. So I go and write here the range, which is uh, D7, D7 to E13, right? So this is how we can narrow down our search. If you want to search on the entire sheet, right, then uh, you, you don't have to write this, okay? This is only for specific area. And I guess you never want to do this on the entire sheet because your values must be on some column maybe one column, two column, three column, right? So here now, what are you supposed to do? Here now you have to go and write target. Just write the target. Now what is the target basically means? Target is automatically a ready-made variable which is created by your, this VBA, this target. This target means that whatever you select, that will go here and you're just going to check that, right? So this is how it is, okay? So if the intersection happens, then what you want to do? And if the intersection doesn't happen, then you what, what you want to do, this is what we will go and write in the else and end if, okay? So I say that if, if let's say it's, it's my area, it's my area means the target area, okay? So what we're going to do here is that uh, we simply say that if this intersection uh, is, I, I'll go and write is, let's say is nothing, you know, is nothing. If it is nothing, then what I'm supposed to do? Uh, let me just go and write like this. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so this is how you write um, if the, you know, the intersection, uh, your target is not falling under this area, then what you have to do, right? Well, in um, what I will do is you can also reverse the situation. You can put the not before. So what happens then it, be, you know, becomes the opposite that if it is a selection, then what you want to do? So it's all up to you what you want to do, right? In my case, if it is not, then I simply go and say exit the sub. 
okay and over here now we have to go and work on this piece now first of all let's say i put the message box here and i show you that my target i, I want to get the my target value for example let's go and understand this first of all put the break code here okay now i select on 55 now when you say select the 55 it should come in your then and it should give you 55 wow this is super cool if i select somewhere outside for example like this now it should go in the else and exit from there okay maybe you can avoid exit because after that also it will stop okay so we are going good now what is the next step i don't want obviously this target value <laughs> what i want to do is uh, i want to actually uh, put that value in the any cell over here any cell let's say i will put that cell in the d2 so what i do is i say that in the d2 i'm going to put a value which is my target right target dot value so what happens let me just go and remove the break code now see that if i select anywhere you see that nothing is happening in the d2 if i select 66 you have 66 here if i select t you have t oh, wow this is amazing obviously user doesn't have to know this so what you can do you can just go and give it a white font you know from here like this right or maybe you can hide this that that i leave it to you i am just sharing the knowledge with you okay the logic so now we are done with this now what is the next step well next step is pretty cool now what we say is that whatever the value we have here that should go here and you know our formula should check if that number is here it should give me some sort of color any color so how we can do that well i think maybe you can use a vba loop but instead of using the vba loop because that's going to be a little lengthier uh, we can just go and use the conditional formatting what do you say isn't it uh well let's go and give it a try so i go in, go in the new rule and now what do you have to do uh well we can say that um use a formula and in the formula i can say that look if u r equals to this value you know then there has to be some formatting so let's say i go and give this yellow one okay now before you click ok make sure that your l7 should not be freezed here otherwise the entire formatting will happen basis your l7 value d2 should be freezed because we have to compare d2 with all the values isn't it so i just go and say all right so let's remove the dollar from seven now this means that obviously you know the conditional formatting fundamentals right i don't have to tell you so automatically it, it will start picking l8 equals to d dollar to l9 equals to d dollar to you know all that stuff so i click ok and let's go and check that oh wow amazing so we got triple six right this way now let me click on edge oh wow can you see that how <laughs> well florin you actually have asked us such a good question i'm sure my subscribers are going to love this okay so you see that i select this 44 now you have the 44 and it's highlighted right so it's pretty simple right well that's it for now and uh, as i said that we will keep uploading the videos in hindi and english i'll try to cover my audience around the globe as well thank you so much once again my dear subscriber florin this was a wonderful and i hope all of you my students who are watching this you will also like this video. I'll wait for your comments, right? Thank you so much. I'll see you then in the next video. Bye-bye.